Hello, so welcome back. This is A Level Physics and this is Summer 22, Paper 1, Variant 2. And let's start with question number 1. Question number 1 says that what is an estimate? Which estimate is reasonable? So the answer is C because this is the most reasonable estimate. Question number 2 says that what is the symbol for the SI based unit of temperature? So for temperature it is Kelvin. B is the appropriate answer. Question number 3 says the first statement about systematic error is not correct. So C is not correct. It says that the effect of a systematic error can be reduced by repeating and averaging the measurements. So by repeating and averaging we can reduce random error. So Question number four says that a ball is thrown with an initial velocity as shown and it gets into the final velocity. What which error represents the change in velocity? So in order to do this question, you must realize that this is the resultant velocity and this is the vector. So if this is the resultant, then this must be the change. So this change is represented by B. So question number five says that a car travels anti-clockwise along a horizontal road of radius 12 meter as shown the car takes time of 4 seconds to travel from position P to Q what is the magnitude of the average velocity average velocity is total displacement over total time total time over here we are given with is 4 and total displacement is the shortest distance from the starting to the end ending point which is PQ this thing so this is but Pythagoras theorem square root of 12 square plus 12 square that becomes the hypotenuse so the correct answer becomes a 4.2 meters per second so question number six says that a uh, water surface a deep well of 78 meter is shown uh, over here in, uh, a stone is dropped <coughs> from the top of the well and the speed of the sound of the air is 330 what is the time interval between the person dropping the stone and hitting it hitting the water and hitting it the water so there, there are two times basically one time is t1 which is the time taken by the stone to hit the surface which can be found by s equals ut plus half ut square initial velocity is zero so t1 would become 3.98 the other time is t2 which the sound of the sound would be heard of the stone of hitting so that would include the velocity of sound so that is 330 equals 78 over t2 which would be 0.23 seconds so the overall time would be 4.22 seconds which is d so question number seven says that which statement is not a requirement of the pair of forces that obey Newton's third law. For Newton's third law, the forces act in opposite direction. That's correct. The forces act on different objects. That's correct. The forces act on objects in contact. That's not correct. And the forces are of equal magnitude. That's correct. So C is the appropriate answer. Now question number eight. It asks us to find the frictional force between the child and the sledge. Let's first write the equation for the child applying F equals to MA 12 minus frictional force is equals to MA. Now do bear in mind that according to Newton's third law if the frictional force for child on sledge is acting in this direction so for the sledge on child would be acting in the opposite direction so for applying Newton's third law over here we get 12 plus F is equals to MA the boat uh, the sledge mass is 40 A so adding this boat's equation would give us 24 equals 60 A and acceleration becomes equals to 6 by 5 Uh, 60 by 24 so let's put this and find the frictional force so substituting this value in one of the equations would give us the frictional force as a 4 newton so question number 9 says that uh, 
stone and a rubber balls are thrown which graph shows the velocity time graph if they both reach terminal velocity so the stone would have a higher terminal velocity than rubber so b is the appropriate answer so question number 10 says that what is the speed and direction of the ball x after the collision so just applying a perfectly elastic collision equation we get v1 to be to the left hand side and speed of 13 meters per second and question number 11 says that two forces form a couple which statement describe the two forces so c seems to be the appropriate answer they have the same magnitude so question number 12 says that the diagram is in equilibrium which arrow shows the direction of the force on the rod from the hinge so the weight is in this direction this is the arrow of tension so the arrows must follow each other so this must be the arrow for the force on the rod from the hinge so d is the appropriate answer so question number 13 so applying about the hinge which is the pivot clockwise moment equals to anti-clockwise moment getting the value of f to be 981 newton after getting the value of 981 newton uh, we apply f equals to k the spring constant is given as 10 kilo newton per meter so the extension becomes 98 centimeter so 9.8 centimeters so c is the appropriate answer so question number 14 says that a granite stone is being transported from earth with density rho to another planet with twice the acceleration of free fall what is the density of the rock on the other planet so the density is basically mass over volume which is independent of uh, the free fall so it would remain the same so it is b so question number 15 says that a closed tube is thrown it is not exposed to the atmospheric pressure so which equation is correct so if applying the barometer equation uh, left is equal to right on the left we have pressure p1 on the right we have pressure p2 and the pressure because of the liquid which is rho g y minus c which is this height so rearranging this c is the appropriate answer question number 16 says that which quantity equals to power power is force into velocity b so question number 17 says that uh, filament lamps have the same useful output power one a new one has an efficiency of 40 percent and an old one has an efficiency of five percent what is the ratio of the input power to the new lamp to the old lamp so uh, the input power remains the same so the input power is 0.4 into p out and for the old one it's 0.05 into so 0.4 into p in and 0.05 into p in old so the ratio of new to old is 0 0.05 by 0.4 which is 0 0.13 so a is the appropriate answer question number 18 says that which equation is not required to drive the formula for kinetic energy so among them c is not required so applying young or less equals fl over ae we need to find a spring constant which is f over e so f over e is k which we need to find so we just can plug in the values and find k as b 2.3 to 10 raised to the power 4 Question number 20 says that a wire is being stretched by a tensile force which statement about the elastic limit must be correct. So A seems to be the appropriate answer as it says that the deformation is plastic after the elastic limit has been reached. So that's correct that after the elastic limit has been reached the deformation is plastic. So question number 21 says that what statement is correct for progressive wave should all transfer energy so D is the appropriate answer so that's it for today's video do like and subscribe my channel for more videos thank you